and gentlemen, welcome to Fashion Avenue News TV, where only the best will do. I'm your host, Sophia Davis, and tonight we have a media mogul in the house, Mr. John Staples, who is director. He does quite a bit of things. I mean, he has so many titles, I can't even tell you. I'm going to let him tell you. But we're going to take a walk over to our sponsors first, and we'll be right back. gentlemen we are back on fashion avenue news tv and i have my celebrity guest tonight mr john staples director of media for atlantic city fashion week now he has other titles that he's going to tell you about but i am so happy john that you had time to talk with me and uh you know i know you're busy so i wanted to get right to it, get right down into the questions. Now, you started your photography. First of all, I'm sorry. Welcome to the show. Let me Thank welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I'm just so excited to speak with you. <laughs> okay. Um, you started as a hobby, your photography. Yes. And you're here now. You are one of the most sought after photographers. You, you are a media director for Atlantic City and you work with other organizations as well as having your own studio. So yes. tell me, how did you take a hobby to where it is now, a business? Well, it was, it was just the love for it. It was the passion that I had for photography um, that kept me in it. And then as I got older and found myself at a place where I could afford the equipment and everything, it just went from there. I started buying equipment and it just went on as a profession. That is fabulous because a lot of people just dream of doing what you've done, turning their hobby actually into a money-making business. Now, are you self-taught or did you go to school? Did you take classes? How um, did you do that? A lot of it is self-taught. A lot of it is um, in the very beginning, you know, I took I did like little classes that, you know, like a, my local camera shop was holding a photography class. And it was just basically to get to know my camera. And then after I got familiarized with my camera and my settings and everything like that, it was everything else was self-taught after that. Well, that's amazing because a lot of people can be self-taught and make wonderful careers. So it doesn't mean you have to have a degree per se. You know, some people think, oh, I have to go to school. But there are a lot of self-taught people in the world that do wonderful work. Now, are you part of any professional, say, photography organizations? Because I know that sometimes that's a help as far as learning or getting jobs. Um, I am part of uh, Professional Photographers of America. With joining that, I pay, you know, um, a monthly membership and I got uh, insurance through them. Um, I got equipment insurance. Also, I have like a liability policy through them as well. Um, and uh, it helps me with forming my contracts and everything because they deal a lot on a legal end as well. So if I, lead it, if I needed legal representation, I can go to that organization um, for that matter. And also they put out like sample contracts for us to copy and use for our own. Well, that's very important because a lot of our photographers or just people that are independent sometimes don't understand the importance of things like insurance or being part of some place that maybe you have a mentor that can help you a little bit to understand different legalities or structures of business. So right. I think that that's, you know, that's great. That's great to be part of something. 
what type of photography do you specialize in? I know that, you know, some photographers are runway, some photographers, you know, uh, do studio models, editorial. What would you call your specialty? Oh, man, Miss Sophia, I, I never really narrowed it down to one thing because I do so much. And I love it all. So talented. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. You know, and I love it all. So I never thought of like, what one thing do I do that I specialize in? It was like, I couldn't narrow it down, you know, because I enjoy it all. Like doing photography is what I love. It's my passion and it shows in my work. Um, But like, oh my God, like I did when, I originally got what Atlantic City Fashion Week was back in season two, you know, and now we're up to 18, you know, so I, so I love the runway as well, you know, um, and the photo shoots and hit, like, I could never narrow it down to just one thing. Like, it's because just so you're much. you're so talented and you can see so much creativity in all of the areas of photography. But I know one that I like that you do very much and you do shoot some beautiful plus size models i wanted to just because sometimes plus size models uh you know they may be a little uh camera shy right but you have put out some amazing photos of plus size models talk about that well in the very beginning it, it it goes back to the very beginning of me going professional with my photography because You know, I got tired of seeing the average, well, I can't even say the average, but the smaller models doing things. And I always said, you know, there's some plus size models that can do the exact same thing, you know, and and blow it out the water. And that's where I geared my, when I started my business and I came out professional, I studied and learned how to pose plus size women, how to photograph them without looking bigger than what they are, um, how to accentuate the curves and everything like that. Um, and that's where I cater to. That is the market that I'm in. I love it because I love plus size women, you know, so, and there it is, you know, it just took on a whole thing of its own once I got started with it. Well, I think that's fantastic because there are some photographers that may not want to shoot plus size women, maybe because they may not know how to structure them, but all of the photos I've seen of your work with plus size women have been absolutely beautiful. So thank, thank you for taking us under your wing <laughs> and, and making us look fabulous. Ladies thank and you, gentlemen, you. we're talking with John Staples. He is a media mogul and I am telling you, he is fantastic. We're gonna talk to him more. We just gotta run over to our sponsors and we'll be right back in just a moment. We are back with John Staple, and he is one of the most sought after photographers, very professional, has his own studio. We're going to get into all of that. But I want to ask him, what is the difference between, say, you or even professional photographers and other photographers? Because everyone that has a camera is not a photographer. Exactly. And I always say that, I always preach that in my live videos that just because a person picks up a camera doesn't make them a photographer. What separates me from them is the knowledge. 
um, having the knowledge to do things on a whole nother level. The whole entire experience with me is what separates me from the other photographers out there. Um, I put the years in, I put the time in, you know, 14 years in, you know, photography. Um, I put the work in. And that's, that is what except that separates me because when a client comes to me, it's the whole experience from start to end that they love, where when they book me, it's from there on, there's a relationship. I need to, I need to see the outfit you're wearing. I need to, you know, the shoes all the way down to the shoes. You know, I need to see everything moving forward up until that day when you get up in front of me, in front of the camera, and then we start working on posing. It's the whole experience that separates me from the others out there. Now, are there models you just would not shoot because maybe they have a bad attitude or maybe um, they want everything free or, you know, or not just models in general, but people, you know, it's a relationship between the client and the photographer. And like anything, you have to pay for work. If you go to the supermarket and you buy milk, you have to pay for milk. You can't walk out without with the milk without paying because then, of course, you'll be arrested. Right. How do you deal with those type of clients? Because I find that sometimes people feel like, you know, I want free. Well, it's, you know, I listen to them. I hear what they're saying. Like, I've had models come to me and say, oh, I don't pay for pictures. Well, I'm the wrong person that you need to be talking to. You know, um, because you come to me, you're paying. Um, if I do something free, it's because I wanted to do it. Um, it's because I chose to do, I chose to shoot that model or that person for free. That was my decision. Um, when they come to me looking for free, that conversation really doesn't go no further than them introducing. And then once they say, oh, I don't pay for pictures, then that conversation is over. Um, I can't do nothing for them. Because if I'm traveling on the road and everything, you got to pay for that service. Mm -hmm. You know, um, mm -hmm. I get a lot of that. Um, whereas though, uh, I get clients or models that come to me that don't want to pay. You know, I, I, I can understand if I decide to do something on a TFP level, time for photo level, then that's a different story. But don't come to me automatically and just thinking we're going to shoot and you're not going to pay for it. Your business, right? Your business. You're not doing this because you have nothing else to do with your time. This is your business. Any place else they go, they would have to pay. But so, a lot of times, a lot of times they take it on because I'm a small business, and because it may be our people that I'm supposed to do it for free. Just because you have 35 million followers on Instagram, um, that doesn't matter to me. Because you know, those 35 million are not giving you anything. So it's not important. How is that helping you? Because exactly. they had 35 million people. If they don't want to pay, their 35 million people probably don't want to pay either. I can't put exposure in the bank. <laughs> exactly. And I pre you know what? <laughs> you need to write a post on that one, John. Now that's that I like. I can't put exposure in the bank. And I like that because you know what? That's the same thing, you know, with magazines. Like if a model is published, they want a free magazine. The paper costs money. To one page in a magazine costs money. It's not free. So, you know, people have to respect what each other does as a business. You know, so I think that that's very important. And I think that, uh, you know, when you talk to models and you explain to them, they will come around because they know of your reputation and the work that you yes. do. So I think that's fabulous. Yes. Now, one of the questions that someone asked me, they wanted me to ask you this is why do photographers keep their names or logos on the photos when they upload them or whatever? Is That's it just, just for, um, to, so they know who shot it or? No, putting, a, putting your watermark on your image is basically like um, you can't go buy a famous painting without their signature on it. You know, you can't buy a famous handbag without the Gucci logo on it or the Louis Vuitton logo. Like, I mean, even with this, I mean, Louis, my scarf is LV all over it. Like, you can't buy, uh, you know, that's who made it. So when it comes to photography and we sign our images, that's putting our stamp on it. 
to say, I did this. This is my work. This is my art, you know? And if you take the proper steps um, of doing everything the right way, everything falls under the copyright laws. So if I sign my image, that's my work. You cannot remove that signature. That's like you going and paying a million dollars for a painting and then come home and cut the artist's signature off of it. Now yeah. the painting is worthless. Exactly. So that's why photographers sign their work because we created it. We, we, we shot it, you know, it's ours. You know, the copyright law states that anybody records or takes a picture with their device, they own it. So that is going back to say, hey, I shot this, I own it. Here's my signature on that piece of work. Excellent. Now, another question that uh, they made me ask you. <laughs> Talk about editing. A lot of photographers now, this is a question they made me ask, okay. don't edit their work. And they feel that, um, you know, as a photographer, like a brand, you want your best work out there. Not that you should edit, say if you take 800 pictures at a fashion show, no one thinks you should edit 800 pictures. But some photographers put up work that is not edited at all. And it's not so much that they look bad, but you could tell it's not edited. Right. And why do they, why do they not like to edit? Some photographers don't know how. Um, some photographers, you know, I go through that with, our show. Some photographers take images and when they post them, and I'm like, they did nothing to these images. I don't care how many images I shot. When I shoot a Lancy Fashion Week or any fashion show, when I come home, I upload those images, I correct the exposure on all of them mm -hmm. to make sure they're all, they all look alike. You know, there's not one darker, one brighter. You know, I go through those steps and then post them. I don't go in and do any major editing but I make sure things are right with that. I do what we call a batch process. So I upload them all, go through a batch process that correct color corrects all of them, and then I put them out. Some photographers just don't know how to edit. And people need to, um, whether it's a model or a show, I know photographers that put work out of, the, of a model and it's not edited. And the, you know, I've had the model ask me, can you edit these? No, it's not my work. You know, no, I'm not going to edit. It's not my work. But some photographers will take a picture and they don't know anything about editing. They don't know what software to use to edit. And they just give the pictures as is. Wow. You know, I just, I just thought that as a photographer, you would know that you need to edit so you would know editing. I mean, and I think that's why they asked me the question, because I think a lot of people just assume that the photographer knows how to edit. So they were wondering why isn't the picture edited. But as you just explained, some of them may not even know how to edit. They don't. They don't I wouldn't they, even know that, actually. They don't know how to edit. They don't know. They just all they do is, is take the picture. I've heard of photographers that charge for editing. Like, OK. I'll do the photo shoot. Here's the pictures, but if you want them edited, it's additional money. Wow. You know, okay. I, I, you know, some of the famous photographers that I follow, you know, they do so much work, they send, they outsource their images to a retouching company. You know, yeah, but I, that's not bad as long as it gets done. I yeah, mean, I, I can't see putting out anything that's unedited. That's just not yeah. my name, that's not my brain. Well, I'm glad that you kind of cleared that up. And I hope that it helps a lot of people because they said, please ask John because he is like <laughs> so professional. And if anyone knows, it would be him. And so, you know, they made me do it, John. <laughs> hey, listen, it, it's fun. You know, Miss Sophia, I do, I do lives on my Facebook business page. Uh -huh. And a lot of this stuff I answer questions about because it's people out there that don't know. And when I do these lives, I do Q&A sessions and people ask questions about, you know, how should they do this or a photographer did this and, you know, and I give them straight up answers. You know, some of the responses I get from people is, oh, you need to tone it down some. Why? I'm telling them the truth. You are telling the truth. 
You know, I get yeah. some photographers that say, man, listen, you say things that I wish I could get on her and say, I was like, why can't you say it? Because I was told it would hurt my business. No, they respect you more for being honest. They for will. Them. That's the truth. They will. They respect you more for that. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking with the director of Atlantic City Fashion Week, the professional one and only Mr. John Staples. We have some more questions for him, but we have to run and check out our sponsors. And we'll be right back in just a moment. gentlemen we are back on fashion avenue news tv where only the best will do and we are talking with john staples and let me tell you he is the best of the best now john i understand that you got the media director award last season now listen all right now, there it is. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. That that award comes from years of experience that you have had, your professionalism. That, that's his home right there. <laughs> that's right. It looks amazing there, John. I wanted to just compliment you on that and to say that one of the reasons you receive awards like this is the way you handle yourself when you handle the press. You will call people, text people, and check to make sure somebody is not utilizing their name to get into a show to do nothing. Because the purpose of the press, of course, is to cover, write something, do something. Exactly. But sometimes you have that. Talk about that for a moment. Well, I, I learned to, with anything that I do, I research. Um, when I was put, when Lamont and Gina put me in that position as media director, um, and I must say, you know, I always say uh, a big thanks to Jay Matthews because Jay Matthews started as the media director for Atlantic City Fashion Week. And he kind of put me in that position because when I came along, he seen my strength and everything. So when he stepped down, I immediately moved up. So I always pay homage to Jay Matthews for putting me in that spot. Um, he's, he's another photographer that was with Atlantic City Fashion Week. So, um, you know, when I got in this position, I got tired of seeing people that would come to the show and do nothing. You know, we've had people um, that would just come to the show and sit there, not do anything, uh, take pictures of themselves. Um, they were getting a free show on a media pass, you know, not having to pay for a ticket, a VIP ticket or a general mission ticket. They will get a media pass, come to the show and just sit there and do nothing. Um, when I took that spot, I said that wasn't going to happen anymore. Um, so everybody knows that when they go to the website and fill out uh, 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 application for a media pass, I'm going to research them. And I've had people, as you know, that put Fashion Avenue News down. They yeah. put uh, Lloyd's Crawford magazine down. And, you know, 
I have your number, so I reach out. Does this person do any work for you? Does this person do? Oh no, you know, and y'all give me, y'all give me the information. No, that person doesn't do anything for for my magazine or anything like that. Well, I'll let you know. They put your name, they put your magazine name down as where the information will be posted. This is what they say they do work for, so forth and so on. Because everybody wanted a free pass to a show. Now, I've heard some people say, if John wasn't so strict, I'll come back. Listen, if you were doing your job, you wouldn't have a problem with me. <laughs> you know, I if, agree. I if agree. you was there to taking pictures, and those pictures, the link for those images got posted, you don't have a problem with me. You know, I don't have to come after you. But when you sit for a whole show and you have no images for it or no article written, you know, I did away with bloggers and everything because how are you a food blogger, but you want to come to a fashion show? Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I think it's important that people understand journalism. Like if you're going somewhere as press, the point of being there as press is to do something about the show. I mean, you know, I've been following Atlanta City Fashion Week for many years, and I don't care what, I will get an article up, I write something on the show. I mean, going back as far as I can remember, something like 2014 or 15, mm -hmm. I think I still have things that I've written uh, on Atlantic City. And I don't say that to justify myself. I say that for people to understand the point of press. The whole point of the press is to turn something over to that particular show, whatever, whatever you're covering. So don't say you're press and then don't even write three sentences. Exactly. Even if you can't write an entire, you know, some people might be, you know, say, oh, I don't know how to write. You don't have to write an essay, but you should write at least a short review and put something up online so that this way they know that you cover. You exactly. know, and I, I think that that's very important. Now, I know you work with Atlantic City, but do you work with other shows as well? Are you, you know, allowed to work with other shows? Yeah, I, I shoot different shows. Um, you know, with Lamont and Gina, you know, they know my lo my loyalty lies with them. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm there. I'm in the mix with them. Lamont tells you, I'm one of the directors that he talks to almost every day, you know. But, you know, he knows I go out and venture and shoot, like, Philly Fashion Week. Um, the new show that started with Philly Fashion Week, Love of My Curves, which is a plus size fashion show um, that's part of Philly Fashion Week. He knows, you know, I travel, I shot style once one year, you know, I came to fashion on the Hudson one year, you know. Um, so he knows I goes out <clears throat> and venture and do other shows and he doesn't have to worry about uh, anything with me. Like I'm not gonna go spread the news about, you know, what Atlantic City Fashion Week does or or try to. No, you're a professional. You're a professional. exactly. I go in. I, my job is to photograph a show. I go and shoot the show, and I pack up and I'm going. Exactly. You're a professional. So you know, people always respect you when you walk into a show. I mean, they know you're a professional. A lot of people, you know, know your work, and um, you know, especially as media director at Atlantic City, because I tell people in a minute, John, don't play. Don't play with John. Not because at all. He's going to investigate, and I appreciate that because so many people, you know, do things where, like you say, say names and this and that, but you call us up, you check with us, and I love it. Now, mm -hmm. is there such a thing as the perfect shot to you? Is there anything that you ever looked at and said, you know what? Hmm, this is it. This is the perfect shot. Yes. Yes. I've shot some plus size models and I'm like, oh my God, this shot is it, you know? And I'm like, listen, we can end this session right now. And this shot right here is everything, you know? Um, I've, I've come across that with some models. It's not with everybody um, uh -huh. that you can get that, you know, I work with models where um, in the beginning of their career, like, yeah, I can get that awesome shot that speaks volumes. And then I have some models that it takes a while to lead up to that because they need that experience, you know, but I've had, I've had models where I, the shot was just like, Oh my God. Like I, 
like I impressed myself. Like I'm like, oh my God, I did that. You know, I've had that. I've had that many like, times. You pat yourself on the back. Yeah, like, oh my God, like, you know, like I put the camera down and walk away, like, you know, like that was it, you know? And then I show it to them and they're like, oh my God, that is, me. I've had models cry. You know, they see the shot and they're like, oh my God, and they start, they start crying, you know? And I'm like, okay, like, why are you crying? You know, like, oh my God, it's that's so beautiful. Good. Yeah. It's so good. That so, is amazing, yes, John. Now, you've opened up your own studio. Can you talk a little bit about what led up to that? I mean, did you just decide, you know what, I'm open a studio or well, what was the process? I had, I had, in the beginning of my career, I had a studio mm -hmm. and I got to a point where I let it go. I was, mm -hmm. I, I was tired of doing studio work. It was, everything was starting to look the same to me. Um, it's not much creativity as being out on location. Um, I got a call from a buddy of mine, a fellow photographer. His name is Michael, Michael Bainey. Um, he called me and they were at a location. And he called me uh, one morning and said, hey, Jay, he said, um, how would you like to come in and be my partner on the studio? And I said, dude, I was like, there's no second thought about it. You know, um, without a doubt, you know, I'm there. So we kept it under wraps all the way until January 1st of last year. Um, and the new year, then that's when I released where I was at the new studio and everything like that. Um, but, you know, much uh, love to him and his wife, uh, Kia, K. Nicole Collections, um, because they came across this studio and I was one of the first photographers that they called and, you know, said, hey, how would you like to come in and partner with us on this? And, Amazing. you know, and he'll tell you, he's like, you know, when I go to the studio, he's one person he don't have to worry about in the studio. Um, he knows I'm going to handle things. I take care of everything. Just, you know, I'm there, you yeah. know. So I take care of everything, you know. And we, this shows, and I always tell people, this shows that our people can work together. Yes, that's right. We can work together and run a business together as long as we're on the same page and the communication is there. Yeah, absolutely right, John. And, you know, people might say we can't, but I wanted to say, yes, we can. Yes. You know, and, uh, you know, we can do it. And, and you're doing it. You're a perfect example. Yes. Now, any last inspirational words for either photographers, models, show producers, anyone like that? What kind of inspirational, uh, you know, words you know, can you give? When it, me as a photographer... Um, the inspiration I can give a photographer is to keep shooting, keep mm -hmm. shooting. Um, that's one thing I did. I used to take my, I take my camera. I used to take my camera everywhere with me. Um, and I would shoot any and everything that I saw. I don't care if it was a leaf on a tree. Mm -hmm. um, don't worry about what other people think or say. Mm -hmm. Focus on you, better yourself. Um, and keep, and, and, and just keep grinding, you know, um, it took me, you know, I've been in it 14 years and I, I, I'm still not where I want to be. You know, I keep pushing, I keep moving because I, I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm my worst critic, mm -hmm. you know, I'm my worst critic. I'm my own competition. Stop trying to be in competition with other photographers. Don't try, every photographer shoots differently. You know, don't compare your work to another photographer. Just learn your style, your technique and keep pushing. When I talk to producers, I say this. Oh, one more thing about photographers. This is something I was told by two producers. One producer told me, sometimes you got to come out of your area to make it. Mm. And then another producer told me, never let, uh, geography determine your success. Okay. So my photographers, listen to that. You know what I mean? You you have to, you like, I don't mind taking those trips to New York because that two hour trip ain't going to determine my success. Mm -hmm. You know, when I talk to producers, 
um, I tell producers of this, if you're producing a show, always plan for the next show. Mm -hmm. Never go in it thinking I'm going to do this one show and that's it. Always plan for the next show. You got to keep it going. You can't just go in and do one show and then after that show, you blow everything. Always plan for the next show. If you want to keep going, you know, for like Atlantic City Fashion Week, we're up to season 18. That's because Lamont always plans for the next show. You know, I watch him. You know, he's always planning. And he'll tell you, from the minute we finish one show, I'm calling him like, yo, what's the dates for the next show? Because we go, I go right at him and we start planning for the next show right after that show was done. You know, so that's what I say. Always plan for the next show. And one thing that we have learned with last year is, like you said in that other call, plan an emergency. Plan for emergency. Yes. Yes. Because I, love, I saw a lot of photographers close their studios, sell all their equipment, everything. You have to plan for emergencies. Yeah, because you never know when an emergency will come up. And I think that that is such good advice, John. Not just for photographers, but really anyone can use that advice. Continue to plan. Don't let it be like your last thing that you do. Right. Keep going. And don't be in competition with people. Look at yourself as like, one of the things I always say about Fashion Avenue, we are our own competition. We're trying to be better than we were the month, the last publication that we did. We're exactly. trying to increase uh, our better our photos or um, information, whatever we can do, so that we're better than the last thing we did. We're not looking at other magazines or anything and trying to be better than them. We're right. trying to be better than we were last month. And I exactly. think that that's such a great uh, piece of advice for you to give to not just photographers, but anyone. Right, exactly, exactly. I, wanted, I just want to thank you, John, for taking the time to speak with us because, you know, you, you have a lot of fans in New York. So I, I, I appreciate it. let you know that. I appreciate, Miss Sophia, I appreciate you for all that you have done. And the things that you continue to do is everything is a blessing. I look at everything as a blessing. You know, me sitting here talking to you, you reaching out to me about different stuff, you know, I take as a blessing and I don't take anything for granted. You know, I appreciate it all. I appreciate all my followers, you know, everybody that's, you know, I'll be out and somebody be like, yo, there you go. That's the photographer, you know. Right. You know, I, I appreciate it all. I appreciate the people that follow me, that comes on my lives and you know, I'm very appreciative to the whole thing because if it wasn't for my followers and the people that support me, there would be no me. You know, so I appreciate it all. Well, John, you do a magnificent job and it is an honor for me to sit here and talk with you. Yeah, it's Ladies an honor for me to be here talking to Miss Sophia. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been speaking this evening with the amazing director of Atlantic City Fashion Week, fashion industry expert, professional photographer, John Staples. We are so happy to have a moment of his time. We'll see you next week.